Hey guys, so I know what kinds of things you want to see. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey everybody, what I want to talk to you about today are these ubiquitous IHC, AHM, and River Rossi passenger cars. And I'm pretty sure what I'm showing you here is one made by IHC. And I've got another one here in the package made by IHC. Now these are really popular and people sell them relatively inexpensively on places like eBay and on Facebook and in other forums. And I suppose there's a lot of debate as to whether these are prototypical or whether these are quality. And my thoughts on the matter are that I use them, they're quality enough, particularly when viewed from more than three feet away, which is where I view my uh, train layout most of the time. And you know, they're, they're colorful. Sometimes, yes, they're not prototypical, but that's fine for me. I don't mind that very much at all. Um, what I can usually kind of deduce here from what I've seen on the internet is, regardless of whether it's branded AHM, IHC or River Rossi, these are actually all made by River Rossi. And um, because of that, they all have some problems that um, kind of span across that entire board. Now, the issue that I'm talking about are these plastic wheels that are on everything made by River Rossi. And uh, there's, there's no doubt, no matter what you think about the passenger cars, these wheels are pretty terrible. Now, some people complain about the trucks themselves, you know, they're not prototypical again, that kind of thing. But frankly, the trucks work fine for me. And again, from three foot plus, which is where I view my layout, they're okay. One of the most common questions I get when I sell these is, do these have the plastic wheels or do they have the metal wheels? And anytime I say that they have the plastic wheels, I, it's, a lot of times it seems like I've lost the sale because of that. And if we take a look at these plastic wheels, there's just no wonder why. I mean, they're pretty awful, all things considered. Now, these ones that they include with the IHC cars are often the best of the bunch, but they're they're still pretty terrible. They they usually line up with the gauge okay. They're a little bit thick, and um, the flange is a little bit high, but these ones that I'm showing you off of this corrugated side are probably the best out of the three. And I'll show you the ones that I find most on these cars. Now, when I see people asking for solutions to this, they can't find any River Rossi metal wheels or IHC or HM metal wheels. Usually the advice given to them is to use 33 inch wheels. Um, and I have several from several manufacturers because those are used for freight cars mainly. But the problem is this, is the wheels that come with these are not 33 inch wheels. They're actually somewhere between 31.75 and 32. So there's not quite a perfect fit. And of course you may think to yourself, well, if it's fine, if it's not a perfect fit, as long as it works right, um, that's what really matters. And it's not quite that simple either. I'm gonna pop in this 33 inch wheel made by a pretty popular company. They have a good reputation. And what happens is, is this brake shoe has a tendency to squeeze up against the wheel. And so it doesn't spin perfectly freely. Now, it's not bad. On top of that, it seems like the wheel is just a tiny bit. It just doesn't fit quite perfectly. But again, it's, it's not bad. And the solution that you get a lot of times is, well, just go ahead and cut back the brake shoe. I mean, since that seems to be what's causing the problem here and won't allow the wheel to spin perfectly freely, just kind of slice that back and you can sit this 32 inch wheel in there. And again, it's, it's fine if that's what you wanna do, but let's face it, it's kind of kludgy. Um, to me, I'd rather have a solution that works. Not only that, if you use a 33 inch wheel in here, you're actually changing the coupler height just a little bit. And for a lot of you, that may not matter, but for others like me, who has kind of an undulating track because I've got a bit of a temporary setup, changing the coupler height actually could cause a lot of problems, particularly, uh, you know, when you've got two cars that are coupled together, one has correct coupler height, one is raised a little bit, um, then, you know, you could have decouplings as it kind of goes up and down an uneven track. 
Here I've got another manufacturer's 32 inch wheel and I'm gonna pop that in there. And this one is just simply too tight. Um, if you look, you can tell it's 32 because it sits in there just pretty much like the other one. But again, it rubs up against the brake shoe. Now, of course, you could be saying you're getting your money's worth because that's what the brake shoe is supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be stopping the car, but I just don't think this is something you want while you're running this on your track. It could cause derailments. It certainly puts more strain on the locomotive that's pulling these. So I just, I just don't think that's a perfect solution. Of course, a lot of people have been doing the whole cutting the brake shoe back thing or widening the little divots in there. Um, for quite a while, and so they think, well, it's what's worked for me in the past, that's what'll work for me in the future. But I think sometimes when you have a product that comes out that handles this stuff for you and that it's, it's designed perfectly, then why not use that? Why resort to a kludge if you don't have to? What we wanna see is this wheel having the type of clearance we see here, it doesn't rub up against the brake shoe and it spins perfectly fine. Now, if I take the purpose-made wheel um, and stick this in, we're gonna see if it acts the same way as the plastic wheel that originally came with this truck. So we get it in here to, of course, take time to pry the sides apart, make sure it's in the little divots that it's supposed to go in. And once we put it in there, make sure it's in there, um, it rolls perfectly smoothly. And as you can see here, it, it spins quite freely. And uh, it looks like the original OEM plastic wheel, it clears the brake shoes and it fits into the little divots perfectly. So I think that's great. This is, I, I have a lot of these AHM IHC River Rossi cars and I've, I've been looking for a solution and these wheels, um, which are made by a company called Roll True, by the way, it looks like it's a pretty new company, they will do the job. Okay, and just to kind of prove the point again here, I'm gonna take this um, IHC um, corrugated bud passenger car, which has these, um, again, these plastic wheels in them, and I'm going to put in the 33 inch metal wheel made by the really um, reliable and trusted manufacturer. I'm gonna pop them in here. And um, again, we're gonna see that they seem to fit decently in the divots for what it's worth, although you can't feel it, I can. There's just a little bit of pressure, but if you try to spin it, um, again, it's, it's rubbing up against that brake shoe, whereas um, the OEM plastic wheel is not. So um, not only that, again, it rubs up against the brake shoe, but it also seems to just fit a little bit tightly. Um, so we sit here and we try to spin it and it has friction and maybe this is good enough for you, but again, I, I don't think it's such a great idea. So we go ahead and pull that out and grab the wheel by Roll True that's made for it. If I can get, if I can get it here. It's hard to do this while looking at the camera at the same time. Here we go. Um, it is the wheel made by Roll True. We pop that in there. Get it in. It's hard to do this while I'm looking through the camera. Uh, get it in there, pull on the side a little bit, make sure it sits down in that divot properly. There we go. Yeah, I think it's in there. No, not quite. Come on, get in there. It seems to fit well. Uh, we spin the wheel and again, it, it spins freely, let's see if I can get this into the camera here. Seems to spin freely, just like the OEM plastic wheel does. And that's what we want. We don't want, um, you know, we don't want to put any extra strain onto the locomotive. Also, they're freer spinning. They'll, they'll get over your points more easily. They'll get through your turns more easily. Um, and that's exactly what we want. Okay, let's take a look at this IHC um, heavyweight car, and uh, again, I'm gonna show you how to properly size these. So um, if we go in here and this wheel spins fine, pull this out, or, ah, come on, get out of there. I'm gonna pull one of these out of here anyway. There we go. And just like before, we find the equivalent roll true wheel. And uh, again, I'll, I'll show you how to size these here in a minute. We'll pop it in there. Um, this is a slightly different size, so it fits fine. It doesn't feel like it's straining the truck 
at all. It feels like it's sitting in there pretty well. Uh, well didn't quite have that in there. Is it in there? Yeah. And so we spin it, and it, it spins perfectly freely, just like the OEM plastic wheels. The brake shoes don't rub up against it. It's properly sized, and that way we know the coupler height will be exactly where it needs to be. So looks like promising product, great product, and uh, you know, hopefully you'll be able to use these instead of using some old kludge where, yeah, you know, we'll just go and cut a bunch of stuff up and maybe it'll be right, maybe it won't. Okay, as far as sizing these properly, the one thing you're gonna to wanna to do, particularly if you have any of these wheels that have this gap in the center, is you're gonna to wanna to make sure the wheel is actually pre-sized properly. So I have the gauge here and it's, it's really easy to make sure that the two halves are pulled properly apart. So if you look, flanges sit down into the little gaps. Um, you know, if they look like this, uh, you know, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that, again, you size the wheels properly, particularly the width so that um, they fit properly here. You know, Gage, if you can't tell, you know, try to find some wheels you know are good and make sure that the flanges line up with those. Okay, when it comes to properly sizing these and getting the right product, um, what you're gonna to wanna to make sure is you're gonna know which wheel you have beforehand. And these two are particularly problematic because they look very, very similar. They don't look very similar from the ends, but if you notice, actually the centers are quite different. And one of these is wider than the other. One of these will have a center gap of around uh, one eighth of an inch. So if you look, it's just under one eighth of an inch, but it's definitely more than one sixteenth. So that's how you can tell to begin with which of these wheels that you have. And it also shows why they need to be properly spaced from the get go. The other wheel has right around 1 16th of an inch gap. Let me see if I can get you the ruler here. There it is. 1 16th of an inch. Um, that's the gap on the other one. So they are definitely different in the center. Again, um, 1 8th on the wider one, and um, it'd be about 1 16th on the shorter one. And again, this is why sizing these beforehand is so doggone important. Let me grab it again, kind of went away. The other thing you're going to want to notice is that one of these has a lot of exposed axle and the other one doesn't. The other one kind of goes straight from the wheel down to a point, whereas the other one has a lot of axle, a lot of shoulders sticking out after the actual end of the wheel. These are the two ways that you can tell which one's which. Okay, well, let's take a look at the first one here, the one with the wide gap and without a lot of, ooh, let's try, let's try the one with the wide gap and with very little shoulder. So here it is again, it's just under one eighth of an inch, and this one doesn't have a lot of exposed axle before it goes to the conical point. Okay, if this is the one that you have, then the roll true model number that you want is RTW935248. Here's an example of it. So RTW935248. 248. And I'll actually put a link in the description for how to go purchase these. Okay, the next three types that you may have to replace are first this one with this 1 16th inch gap here. And um, this is the one that has the kind of exposed axle or longest shoulders before it goes to the conical point. So that's the first one that you're looking for here um, um, if you want to replace this particular type of wheel. Okay, um, the next one that you'll have to replace are these that actually don't have a gap and they're gunmetal gray. And these are the kind that are on the bud corrugated car here. So if you look, there's no real need to size these properly. So as long as there's no gap because they size out to begin with. If you look, there's actually some exposed shoulder, but it's just easier to tell because of this sort of gunmetal gray or kind of lighter than black, a little bit shiny, a little bit sparkly plastic. Um, that's what you mainly look for here, okay? The other type I've seen, and they seem to be very rare, are these all metal wheels. And um, effectively, the way to tell with these metal wheels, be careful, because these are, these are not the most common ones. On one side, they have kind of a solid black plastic um, inner. The other one has this sort of friction plate here that goes up against the axle. 
haven't seen these too often. I, I think I've got a few with them. Either way, if you've got uh, one of these three types, um, the wheel that you're gonna replace by Roll True is RTW935259. Um, they are the direct equivalent and they will go right into any car that has these. All right, now the third type of wheel that you're going to have to replace are gonna be one of these two huge, huge flanged wheels. Um, one of them is really popular and the other one I haven't seen very much at all. So this particular wheel has huge flanges. Um, it has one insulated side and the other side is direct press fit. So you can kind of look at it here. It's all nickel plated, it looks like. And um, yeah, I, just, I haven't seen them very often. I've only had them on two sets so far that I've received. I don't hear people asking about them very much, but either way, here's what that one looks like. The other one, however, is very common. And again, it is huge flanges. Um, and basically it's these two plastic slash metal um, parts that are they're terrible they fit over this central metal axle. And these things are not very tight fit. They always just come out of the proper size, proper width, and you have to sit here and kind of try to coax them back in. I just, I can't think of any worse wheel I've seen on um, IHC, HM, Riverasi cars than these things. They're kind of nice in that they're metal, so you can actually put a wiper up against them if that's what you want, but they're a real pain either way. When they're properly sized, they will have at least a little bit of a gap in the center, as you can see here. Very, very small gap. It's it's nah, it's right around a millimeter at best. Um, but, you know, I, I don't really have to show you much. It doesn't have that friction plate on the inside. This is what it looks like. I think everybody knows them. They're terrible. They're 30-inch wheels. Both of these are. And the equivalent Roll True model is RTW. 900259. There are other roll true wheels, but these are the ones that you're going to have to work with to replace um, the wheels in your passenger cars. All right, as for the wheels themselves, and once again, I'm going to post links to where to purchase these and where there's a sizing chart. Um, but from what I've seen, these wheels are dead on perfect, every single one of them right out of the package if you purchase them. They're always sized properly. And they're always to the exact width dimensions. Um, so you can see them here, they size properly and the wheels themselves are to perfect dimension here. So you shouldn't have any problems running them on anything even down into the code 70 track. I don't have track that small, but I'm pretty sure they're not gonna have a problem. Um, they're dual insulated. And this was a choice stated by the manufacturer to give you the most flexibility and to make sure that they roll the most true. In other words, there's not one side with a slight bit amount of weight on the other. These should roll perfectly because they're insulated on both sides, which means both sides have exactly the same weight. That way there's no bias in them whatsoever. And um, you can also put wipers on to both wheels um, if you want. Now, from what I understand here, and I'm gonna go ahead and replace these wheels with RTW395259, since that's the one the document says to use. Um, if I read through Roll True's um, literature on this, it looks like they are brass wheels that are then plated in nickel or silver nickel, and then they are blackened from that. So a lot of work went into these. They're actually turned, they're not stamped. It's pretty clear from looking at them that they're turned wheels. So you'll, you should have perfect balance every time. And I'm gonna go ahead and take all these out of here and replace them with the Roll True wheel. Again, the equivalent is uh, 395259 for these particular ones. We'll pop them out of here and then I'll go downstairs and try them on the track and make sure that they really do roll true. So speed this up a little bit.
there we go. And again, they're, they're rolling perfectly. They're sitting in these little divots, so the sizing chart was correct. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get these on the track. All right, you'll see in a moment, I'll put this on the track and roll it around and put it under some power. And I, I, yeah, I just don't know what to say. It rolls smooth and it rolls frictionless and it, it, it really helps the performance of this car quite a bit. Now, one thing to notice is that the coupler lines up perfectly. If you was to use the kludgy method where you would have used a larger freight wheel, this may have not been the case. Now, on your track, that may not matter. On mine, having an, a coupler that's offset makes a huge difference because I'll lose it on my undulating track. All right, so there you have it. This is how to properly replace the wheels on your IHC, AHM, and River Rossi cars. You don't really need to do this quite as much for Concours. They use a slightly different size and they usually have metal wheels that come with it, but this is doing it properly without a kludge or being one of these people going, well, I've done this forever with 33 inch wheels. I can continue to do it. Why bother when you have a product that's perfectly set aside for this use? Um, you know, you'll, you'll have a wheel that fits perfectly spins perfectly as frictionless as possible and you know it's a quality wheel on top of that you don't have to worry about anything weird going on you know these wheels will be consistent from set to set um, so yeah I, I can't highly recommend them enough and if you're just not sure it looks like they sell them in quantities as low as four all the way up to it looks like 96 which i think should take care of most people um, if you want since you've listened this far um, I will give you a discount code here if you want to write it down and that'll actually get you a little bit more off of your order. So get ready. If you purchase these within the month of November and you use the code on Dr. Hobby, I love wheels, then you'll get 10% off of your wheel order. So hopefully that'll help sway some of you. 10% off ain't bad at all. And on top of that, once again, you're getting a product that's specifically designed for this purpose. So, hey, you know, it's it's worth a try, right? Worst comes to worst, pop them in some other cars if you really don't like them, but I'm pretty sure you're going to like them. So, hey, you know, if you give them a try, feel free to leave comment or if you have any comments or questions about this, hey, be sure to leave it down below. Uh, you know, hopefully these things will help people, especially I think a lot of people have a tendency to ignore IHC, AHM and River Rossi cars because a lot of people sort of you know, shove their nose up at them and they don't like them because they're more, I guess, for the hobbyist. But I think they're great and having these wheels in them uh, make them even better. So take care and I'll talk to you later.